Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and this is SketchUp Square One, where we take a look at the fundamentals of using SketchUp. Today, I want to talk about learning to use SketchUp. So, this is different from all the other Square One videos we've done. Um, I wanted to make this video specifically to help the people who are watching these videos. We create a lot of video content that tells you how to use a piece of SketchUp, how to use a single tool or that sort of thing. And I wanted to take a step back and just talk about the process of learning and implementing a new tool in your whatever design process, your, your plan to create something, how that works. This is a kind of, like I said, a step back from the actual content. So whether you have gone to SketchUp Campus and taken the fundamentals course, learn.sketchup.com, if you haven't, I highly recommend doing it. Even if you've been using SketchUp for a while, check that out. It's an amazing resource. Um, if you've gone through every single Square One video and seen how to use every single tool, those are awesome things and it's great that you're learning that information. I want to now just, you know, Pump the brakes, take a break, let's step off on the side and think about how to implement that information. Um, one of the things that I've always run into when people start using SketchUp or any other software is figuring out how to actually go about using it. Like what do, so I, I know how to use these tools now, I know how to draw these things, how do I actually implement that? The question really comes down to where do you want to use it? There's generally two different people who have, or, or people want to use it one of two different ways. One is they're just, just, you know, on the side, it's a hobby, it's fun, they want to build something to 3D print, or they're going to renovate a bathroom and they want to draw plans. Uh, the other is, well, I need to use it for work and I'm creating this kind of work. So I want to address those things as far as what are the best ways to actually learn for those two cases. Regardless of which one you're using, the thing I want to encourage you is take it one step at a time. Whether you're creating a plan because you're going to refinish your basement or you are working on a, a landscape firm and you have to redraw a park that's going in, something like that, take it one step at a time. The most frustrating thing you can do when you're learning any new software is dive in too deep, dive in over your head and try to create something and fail because you don't have the tools or the experience to make it succeed. SketchUp, we, we love talking about how easy SketchUp is to learn. And it, it absolutely is compared to a lot of other software out there. SketchUp is way easier to pick up. People start drawing in it much faster than they do in other software. But it doesn't mean you immediately jump into production work on your first day. Take it easy, one step at a time. Whether you are using it for work or for fun, start with something simple. Draw a dog house and not your own house. You know, um, play with something, draw a little, little uh, a car or something like that. Take, if you're working for work, take plans from a house that you have already created, know the plans inside out, model that first, rather than finding some production work you have to get done immediately and you don't, aren't familiar with the job. Those kind of situations are going to put you into a frustrating spot. The other thing, and I know everybody's busy, everybody is under the gun to get their work done, but if you are using SketchUp for work, don't start with a hard production deadline. And we see this all the time on the forum. You know, uh, it's my first job using in SketchUp and I have to have these plans done by tomorrow. I don't understand how layout works. That is a hard spot to put yourself into and it's a terrible learning environment. First time out, make the time to fail. Give yourself an opportunity to screw your first job up. Don't do it in a spot where it's make or break right off the bat. It's just a bad spot to learn. It puts you in a bad spot. It puts the software in a bad spot. And it's a rough place to try to learn. I have a couple of examples you might want to consider before you dive in and start working on that production house or the set of plans that you have to have ready for the city. Uh, for a redesign. Let's consider some of these other things first. All right, so I just have a couple of jobs here that I wanted to show that you might want to think about doing. So this one is, uh, it's a model we did for a live model and it's just a redesign of an office. So the dimensions here are from a real room 
and the everything that's in here is actually pulled off of 3D Warehouse. This was an opportunity to just sit down and use SketchUp in a real space. So this is a space, maybe this is my real office that I'm sitting in so I know what the space looks like, know what it feels like, and where do I want to put these pieces? I got to practice a little bit of drawing, I got to practice bringing in items and moving them around, and I ended up with a model that was actually useful for what I was doing. This was not an under the gun, have to have this done, have to have it to the boss by Friday, end of day. This was just an opportunity to learn SketchUp, use the tools, and end up with a product of a final draw or a final model that might be useful if I really do end up redesigning my office like this. All right, let's look at another one. This one is a container house. I've never designed a container house before, um, but I've seen lots of them out there. So again, I took stuff off of the 3D warehouse. I took containers. I drew some doors, windows. Some of the shapes were, were made from scratch. But I got to experiment with SketchUp again using existing content in the containers and then using the SketchUp tools to draw some of the additional information. Not under the gun. This was totally a creative process. There was not a way to fail at this. Well, I mean, I guess I could have messed it up bad enough that it failed. But the idea here was that it was totally exploratory, learning to use the SketchUp tools, making something out of my imagination. Because I was making it up, there wasn't a wrong way to do this. It was just something to play with. And this is the perfect situation where you have a thing you're trying to make, it's in your imagination, but you don't have like a finished product. It doesn't have to be a set of working drawings by the end of the day. It's just a model that you get to learn while you create. All right, moving along. Speaking of houses, we were kind of on the house track here. I'm using houses as an example. This is a little model that I made just a 3D print. This did not actually have to go anywhere. This was, was a, a kind of a passion project, a fun project. It was a little haunted house that I wanted a 3D print. And uh, I did it lunch hours and evenings. Lunch hours and evenings are the perfect time to learn to use something new like SketchUp. Uh, again, not work time, not anything like that, but just taking an hour at lunch and working on a project you're interested in is an amazing way to either learn or level up your SketchUp ability. Spending that time that doesn't have other demands on it to actually learn a new tool, learn how to use something in SketchUp you've never done before, do some work that's not production work if you use SketchUp professionally. Amazing way to learn SketchUp. All right, finally, this is something I recommend to people, whether you're using SketchUp for architecture or something else. This is a house we lived in, and I actually had a copy of the plans from the builder. This, I did not have to model this. It wasn't like I, the house doesn't exist if I don't get it done. This wasn't, I don't get paid if I don't get it modeled. This was, again, something I did at night. I took the plans that I had and created a model of my house because I had access to the plans and I thought it would be cool to have a model of my house. So I actually did that just to get better at SketchUp, just to practice at SketchUp and learn the process of transposing plans into a 3D model. So again, not production drawing. This didn't ever go anywhere. This, this, this model didn't end up as uh, you know construction documents or anything else. I just learned to model a house or practice modeling a house using that set of plans. In all these examples, the important part was I had something to model. I had a specific goal as what I wanted to create, but I wasn't under the gun necessarily to get it done. This is a great way to learn SketchUp or another tool. Now I know it's super easy for me to say, don't work on production work because I had the, the freedom to work on these in a situation where it wasn't under production. I know some people out there are using SketchUp for work and they have to get under production and that's awesome. I understand, it happens. I'm not saying that it's not out there, it's not real, it is, I get that. What I am trying to urge you to do is if you are in that position, take time besides production and learn SketchUp better and get more familiar with the tools and develop your workflow when you're not under the gun. If you have the ability, if you have that opportunity to say, you know, I'm learning SketchUp, keep doing it the old way for one more job and then bring your SketchUp skills up to where they need to be for production, you're more likely to, you know, 
get the get it get better at it that way than you are under the gun under the gun is just a tough under deadlines is a tough way to learn it's it's pressure it means you have to get things done a lot of people end up like walking away from tools and going back the way they did it before when they get to that final deadline and that's not a good way to implement anything so I just wanted to make this video to, to just, I've, I've had a lot of experience with this, had a lot of experience with people learning new software. And if you can balance learning something new with keeping going, or if it's just something you're doing for fun, start with a project that doesn't matter as much and then work your way up to modeling your dream house. It's going to give you a better chance of success and you're going to be a better SketchUp user at the end if you give yourself that grace. So. I just want to throw that out there because we talk a lot about how to use SketchUp, what buttons to push. And I wanted to, you know, also take a break and say, how do you set yourself up for success when learning a new tool like SketchUp? If you like that video, go ahead and click like down below. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. We create several videos each and every week and you'll be notified of all of them if you subscribe. Most importantly though, leave us a comment down below. Tell me about your SketchUp learning journey. Or if you're just getting started, what's your plan? We like making these videos a lot. We like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.